the idea of the American dream of like you work hard, you know, you whatever, follow the rules and you'll be successful, I think is really hard for people to give up because if you don't have that, then what do you do? Well, I wouldn't say the problem is necessarily limited to white athletes not speaking out. I think we find in our society in general that there's a lot of white people who um, they may not agree with racism, but they're okay with being complicit with it. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that it's more difficult for white people in general to speak up on behalf of, of these issues? I think it requires of white people the realization and acceptance that pretty much everything we've been told about our country like isn't true we were not founded on life liberty and the pursuit of happiness we were certainly not founded on freedom the idea of the american dream of like you work hard you know you whatever follow the rules and you'll be successful i think is really hard for people to give up because if you don't have that then what do you do um, where that has worked for them and worked for their family and worked for people like them and who look like them um, and, and worked for a lot of people in this country. But I, I do think that it takes like a wholesale realization that like we are not the nation we think we are. Not to say that there's not amazing things about us and that we could be that um, and that we could try to achieve those ideals and try to live that way. But uh, I just feel like people are like, well, we were founded on freedom and liberty. And so that's why we became so powerful and rich. And, you know, now we're here and it's like, is it really that big of a problem? And it's like, no, we became rich because we, you know, we had not even 250 years of slavery, a lot long, longer than that. And I would argue that we're still in it. And it's just like, we had that because we have free labor for all this time in a time when like labor was was like the way you made money and the industrial, like everything. And I just think it, it, it requires people to look at themselves and give up this thing that like they hold so, so true. And it's not close to them because it's not many people that live in their communities or their neighborhoods or, or whatever it is. And I don't know, I, I really struggle with it because it's just such a fact of life. It's such, a, it's such a, an undisputed history of America like how can you agree that slavery happened and then not agree that there's systemic racism um, still happening in the most brutal and, and cruel form I, I really don't understand that like Jim Crow laws were like not very far away there's people in our lifetime right now that voted in this election that at, at a time in their life they could not vote like I don't understand the sort of this cognitive dissonance there so it I don't know well, the history part is the most unsettling because, um, you know, I, I made this comparison before uh, I read Isabel Wilkerson's wonderful book, Cast, which is, you know, life changing, much like Warmth of Other Sons. And I had her as a guest on the podcast recently. And, you know, one, one thing that um, she talks about is comparing sort of Nazi Germany um, to the U.S., not like a direct direct, but just showing that there are similarities there. And I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, the thing is, when you go to Germany now, you don't see statues of Nazis. You don't see streets named after Nazis. You don't see bridges named after Nazis, right? Like the, the part uh, the, where Hitler's residence is, I think they like paved over it and it's like, like you would never even know this. They don't have these memorials. But yeah, in the US, um, I made this, this observation about John Lewis, you know, when he got his head cracked open on the, on the bridge, um, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, Edmund Pettus was a KKK leader. That bridge is still standing. It's still named after this dude. Like we have these monuments to racism literally everywhere. And it's like, who does that? No wonder we who can't agree on what the actual history is because we're too busy sanitizing it and making it seem like, oh, I mean, it was bad, but it wasn't that bad. I was like, no, no, it was that bad. And we probably bad. shouldn't, yeah, it was really bad. And we probably shouldn't have a whole bunch of monuments uh, memorializing the very worst of ourselves around this country, and yet we do, which is why I thought those monuments coming down were always important. It was symbolic more than anything. I say all this to say, you say you're somebody who's educated themselves quite a bit about racial issues. What was it that made you seek that education? Because I, I find that a lot of people just are not that intellectually curious about other races. 
Mm -hmm. Where did it start? I, I feel like it a little bit started just from my own life, being a woman on the women's national team from basically the moment we get on there, we're like, yeah, we're underpaid. We're always trying to get more money. Like we deserve more. So there's a little bit of that being a gay woman. Um, I think I know at least what it, it's like to not have one or two rights in, in my life to look at the flag and understand that. So I, I think while it's absolutely not the same thing, I think I can use my imagination to stretch it to be the same thing and sort of understand that this is not happening. I think for me, I, it really boils down to while I have not lived a black experience, while I do not know that my family's not black, I don't have this historical, like, you know, I guess timeline to look at, like, it's either I believe what people are saying or I don't. And it's either you like believe, you know, that this is happening, which it is, or you think that like millions of people are just all making up the same story, which is impossible, right? So it's like, there's so many things that you can look to. And I, I feel like people want all of this tangible evidence and they want to see it. They want to see it happening every day. They want to, you know, almost like experience it for themselves to really be able to believe it. And I'm like, just because I haven't experienced it doesn't mean that I can't look at someone when they're telling me what's happening and me just believe that, like, where's the, the sort of trust in things. And so I think that was the, the start of it. And then once I kind of got I think just like a little bit of information about them. Like there's so much that we just don't know. And I think the, the education and the history piece is huge. Um, Nicole Hannah Jones should have like a statue in every, every country or uh, every state in the entire country. Um, she should probably be the head of education, but it's mm -hmm. like, there's so much that we don't know. And I think I wanted to understand better all of the like little intricacies of it because i think what people need to understand too is is like it affects everyone negatively like this is not a good system this is not a healthy system this does not mean just because you're above someone that you actually like have a good life and this is what i wonder you know a lot about white america particularly poor white america is like the people in power are just telling you that like you're okay and you're better because you're better than black people or people of color, whatever it may be. Meanwhile, like they're keeping your life shitty too. Like they don't want you to have a good life either. We don't want to share the wealth in this country. We don't want to make sure everyone has education and healthcare and all of these things. So there's that part of it. And then it's just like, it, it's happening everywhere every single day, all the time. And I think as we've, you know, been able to see more of it with cell phone footage and, you know, Black Lives Matter organization do an incredible job to educate people among many others. It was just like, this is the biggest problem that we have in our country by far. And it's just cruel, frankly. I mean, it's just the, the level of cruelty that we're seeing with it of, of denying one's own experience is just like kind of unacceptable. And so I, I feel like I just couldn't get enough information about it and it was everywhere. And how do we do anything or do something to, to try to help? Now we spent um, the earlier part of this year where we were in this very intense racial conversation after Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, uh, a conversation that I don't recall across my lifetime us ever having, not in this particular way. And certainly not, it seems like for not for that sustained period of time, was there any part of you, especially given how much you'd spoken out and, um, you know, you taking the knee that you felt, I don't know, validated is the right word, but I don't, I don't know what the proper adjective, but how did that make you feel as somebody who had, before it was popular, had been discussing these issues and bringing them to the forefront? I really didn't because I think even like, as it was all happening, yeah, I think the easy thing would be like, oh, you're kneeling now. Like, that's, that's interesting. You were so against it then. But it really was almost, almost made me sad because nothing had really changed. It's just like the narrative had changed around it. And it's like, it's actually just a choice people are making, whether they want to listen or not, or whether they feel enough pressure to say something or not. I, I saw that a lot with businesses, I thought, and 
different leagues and, uh, you know, federations or whatever. Um, and I, I do think that it's like just a choice of whether we want to believe people or not and whether we want to do the work or not. And it was almost, it was like, I was happy that it was happening um, because at least more people were involved and, and hopefully this, you know, swell could not just be a wave, but, you know, be something that was lasting and sustainable. But yeah, in the same sense, it was kind of like, even like listening to Roger Goodell talk, it's like, you had to do two statements after four years like you can't get it right like you don't know what to say you, you know what i mean it's just because what we're worried about what upsetting people's feelings like upsetting you know people's uh view on the military or disrespect or whatever it is so in a way it was just like okay how can we you know i guess i don't know just gather all of this power and interest and um, you know, willingness to talk about things and just move that forward and not focus on, you know, who did what, when or whatever, but it's still just kind of disappointing, you know, even the way that it's sort of played out this year is like, it, you know, we got to a height during the pandemic and we had the protests and everything. And then like, when it really came down to it, a lot of people just still were like, eh, I'm okay with racism. And I'm just, I was just like, I feel like you said it too nice. It's like, you're either racist or you're at least okay with it. But I'm kind of like, if you're okay with it, like you kind of are. Yeah, you, like, you're racist. <laughs> exactly. You're racist. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, that is kind of what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I think in the beginning, you just saw a lot of people scared to not do anything, to not at least say something or put something on Instagram or whatever it was. But, you know, the, the lack of sustained effort and conversation and changing hearts around it, I think is a little disappointing. It's like, if you watched any of those, you know, videos of Maude Arbery or, I mean, George Floyd, anything, it's like, what are we talking about here? Like, these are not bad apples. These are not isolated incidents. These, these are, you know, hundred year long over and over horror stories that just reoccur. Yeah. And I, and the thing is they, everybody immediately had a test and the test of how much and how far that that conversation had progressed was called the presidential election and so mm -hmm. to see that it was still 70 million people was like you know what after all i've seen for four years can i have four more of those it's like are you sign kidding me, me? sign me up what's more and i'm like ah, i thought like 240,000 people were dead you know and you would think that some things would automatically yeah. disqualify you from leading a country of this size and of this magnitude in the world. But apparently not systemic racism, not being a racist, not encouraging white supremacy and not, you know, playing a huge role in killing hundreds of thousands of people. None of those are disqualifying factors. I'm like, what are we doing here, man? Yeah. I'm like, this is nuts. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm grappling to understand a lot of it. I, I really like truly am. I, I just think that, no one's life is really better. I think even if you are richer, you're not really better off. It's like, what world are we living in right now? I'm in Washington state. We just went on, you know, very strict protocols. Again, we have, you know, 250,000 people, I think dead and we're climbing exponentially. There's hate and division and angst and anxiety in the country. It's just like, I don't think anyone's life is really better right now. I think people are just, you know, scared of, I think back to what I was saying, I think people are scared of giving up this idea of like what they are and what America is because they don't really know what's next, I guess, equality. I don't know. <laughs> Seems cool to me.